you don't have a, a decent plan or layout of your of your house with dimensions on it, you might have to do something else to sort of get an idea of what the dimensions are so you can start planning your irrigation system. The best thing I find to do that is Google Earth, which is a great tool. Um, I've just zoomed in on our house here, and then I can print that out, and then I can just get one dimension off the house, you know, maybe the size of the front of the garage or one side of the house, so I can get a rough idea of dimensions, and then from there I can start working out roughly what the dimensions are for the yard so we can start planning our irrigation. So that's a simple way to do it if you don't have plans. Okay, this is um, my best efforts to take that um, Google Maps drawing and convert it into a bit of a map of the house. A bit of therapy there, colouring it in with nice colours as well just to make it a little bit more presentable. Um, it doesn't have to be that flash though if you don't want it. Just really what's most important is to get a reasonably good idea of the dimensions. So there is a bit of give in the irrigation distances but you do want to get it reasonably close. What you want to um, work out then is we've got to work out distances. Now the key thing with any irrigation is you can see the mouse here is, is that you need head to what they call head to head spray so the spray from this particular one needs to be wide enough to hit that one so you get even distribution of flow so that's why in this case it's an eight meter distance from here to here and i've got one head there which i've allowed roughly about 180 degrees spray so that's also a pretty important piece of information it's probably a bit less than 180 because it only goes from here to here and then back but um you can adjust those when you install them and this one is actually 270 because it's going to bend all the way back here and all the way around but the important thing is that the water from this head hits the water from that head and as you go around now our, our particular yard is quite complicated there's a lot of narrow pieces hopefully your situation will be a lot simpler where you might just have a square yard or something a bit even this is quite a complicated little project but still doable all of them are doable it just requires a little bit of adjustments you know here we've got three meter gaps i want three meters from that head to that head um, but what you want to make sure is you get reasonably even coverage of water so that the water from one head is hitting the water from the next head and the coverage so you don't get big dead spots where you're not getting good coverage of water during those dry months. So that's what we have to do. So you need to work out the distances, how much that water has to go to hit that head, how much that, so that's eight meters from there to roughly a 180 degree um, spray. Um, this one's 270 because it's bending back here and here and those are the pieces of information you need to mark on your um, on your drawing and as you can see up close of, uh, and I've used a protractor just to get a rough idea so this gives you a reasonably good idea it's not perfect but you can do some adjustments once the heads are in place um, but as I said if you've got a simpler design than this you may not have this, the issues I've got of trying to match all these you know, little corners and crevices and narrow bits and wide bits but that's the basic principle okay if you want to do your design so that's the next stage of the process okay we've finished our drawing and we've numbered all our heads so in the case of this particular project i've worked out i'll need 19 heads in the lawn to cover the full yard doing the head-to-head -head coverage now the next thing i need to do is go back to my drawing and for each head write in the radius or how far the, the um, head has to throw water and the angle and from that information we can then work out which hunter mp rotator head we would choose for that and then from that we work out our flows and then from there we can work out how many how much flow accumulates in each zone to the point where we have to go to a second zone so first thing we'll do is fill in the details of radius and angle okay so i've gone and put in all the radiuses in this case four meters these these ones are eight meters and so on and then i've also put in the angles so this particular head needs to shoot water at 360 degrees in a full circle 180s etc now this one here is a side strip it's a specialist um, head that's used in very tight situations where um, you have short distances but you need funny shapes in this shape it can do an actual square shape so i've decided i'll use that one in that situation and so on and down to the last of the heads so i've now got the the radius and I have got the dimensions for angle. And from there, those two bits of information, I can now work out which Hunter MP rotator head I need to choose. And I need to go to the, the tables that Hunter provide to decide on that. So that can work out the head, and then I can work out the flow for each head. Okay, to determine which head and the flow we need to use to fill out the table, we need to go to the Hunter MP rotator performance data sheets. Now, if this starts to become a little bit daunting and you'd like a hand with working this out, please, we're here to help and we can certainly do that for you. However, if you do want to have a go yourself, it isn't that difficult if you just follow a few key steps to work out, based on those distances and angles, which head you want to use and therefore which flow you require.
So to do this, I've, you've just noticed the mouse at the top of the screen that I'm moving around, just to follow the mouse as I go through this process so we can work out which head to use. Now the first thing, I've, these are the, the most common MP rotator heads that you will get access to. There are some specialist heads, like I mentioned in the table before we had a, uh, a side strip head. We'll, we'll cover that separately. But this here is the most likely heads that we use in almost all applications. It's the MP1000, the MP2000, and the MP3000. Now the difference between these two, um, three head selections is the distance that will, they will throw at water. So in the case of the MP1000, it's 2.5 to 4.5 meters. In the MP2000, it's 4 to 6.4 meters. And lastly, the MP3000 is 6.7 to 9.1 meters. Now, if you find when you've done your table up, you need water to go further than that nine meters, and even probably conservatively, once you get past the eight meter mark, you may need to choose a different type of hunter head. Now, the, the hunter range has got such a, a large selection of different options that we can certainly come up with a solution. But the one that you may come across is the distances that go beyond that nine meters in larger yards. You can't use this particular type of head, but there's certainly a, a solution available to it, but, but we won't go through that today. Okay, so the first thing we need to look at is which of the three columns we need to work on. So which of the, the radiuses of water fit within these three areas. Now from, you may not remember, but from the table, the first head I had was a four meter radius and it threw out water at 360 degrees. So if you look in here, um, it will fit within the MP1000 range. So it's four meters, it's at the bottom end of the MP2000, but it's comfortably within the MP1000 range. So we'll choose an MP1000 head. If I was wanted to be conservative, it was going further than that, I could jump up to the 2000. But in this case, four meters, um, we'll jump, we'll use um, the MP1000. Now it was gonna be 360, so I now go down to the arc, following the mouse down the left-hand side, to the 360 degree option. Now this is where our, um, our pressure comes into play. So from memory, if you remember, we were around about the three, the three bar or the 300 kPa in our tap. Um, if you're not quite sure what that is, just work on the, the base of the mid range of the pressure. But in this case, we're doing around about this um, three bar to 300 kPa. So we start at that point. So we're at 360 and we're looking at MP1000. So we follow that along. Now, so you can see here that that's 4.3 meters. So that's within the range. Now we want to come across and select the flow. So the one we want to look at is in liters per minute because all our flow calculations from our tap were in liters per minute. So that is the most important piece of information that you've got. So what we're saying, and we need to write this in the table, that the first head that was four meters at 360 degrees will need 2.94 liters per minute from that head. So that's the number we put in our table, 2.94. Might sound, we might even round off to three, but 2.94. Just to choose another head to show you the process again, there was another head that was in, in my selection of 19 heads that was eight meter radius and 180 degrees. So if I come back up to the top, eight meters obviously won't um, be able to be coped, um, handled by the MP1000 or 2000. So I'm up at the top end of the MP3000 range to reach eight meters. So I'm in this column now. So same thing, in this case, I only need 180 degrees. So I come down the side to 180 degrees. I look at the pressure that we looked at, which was three bar or 300 kPa. I follow that right across if you're following the mouse here in the middle of the page the radius here says it will do up to 9.1 so I've got that's that's plenty fine and then I'll keep coming across to the liters per minute and in this case you can see because it's such so much further it's a lot more flow to get that nine meter range at that pressure so we need 7.18 liters per minute for that particular head and we write that in the table and then all we do is find our way through all the different heads doing exactly the same process look at the radius, which MP rotor fits that uh, particular scenario, what angle we want, and approximately the pressure. If you don't have the pressure, just stick within the mid range, which is in the dark bolded color, follow it across, and then write in the flow, whatever that might be for that particular head in your table, and then we can add them all up. So hopefully that makes sense. It's reasonably simple. Um, and um, you can well and truly do it on your own if you want to go ahead and do that. But like we said, we can certainly help you with it if you'd like that. If this video was helpful, you can get a lot more information on our website, completelandscapes.co.nz, or check out other videos on our YouTube channel.